A disgruntled employee actually that on this panel because I don't know how I'm supposed to follow these guys acts so it's like my, the people have to, to you know follow in my diva's footsteps I, Colin I don't have the same enthusiasm at this point in the evening but anyway I, my, my message is very serious and and perhaps even a bit depressing so I'm going to just tone it down hopefully you guys won't fall asleep um, but this is a very political issue this is a very um, I think some universities are embarrassed by the the truth that the numbers show in the work we've done. Um, it's come up quite a few times in the afternoon that I've heard people talk. So um, hopefully you will learn from it. Why I've chosen universities of technology is they are supposed to be institutions that, that manage the polytechnic tradition, which basically is work, is work integrated learning, that people sandwich between learning and, be, and going into the, into the field for experience. And, and we've done a, um, a study of two of those, one in the Western Cape and one here in the Vaal Triangle. And it's quite interesting to see the, the differences, but unemployment is very high. And in fact, the study was for the fourth year level. If you know the structure of the, of the University of Technology diplomas, the first three years are diplomas. They're not degreed students like university students. You, your hierarchy, Colin. I mean, there's that uh, very strongly entrenched by the university system itself. <clears throat> but for University of, of Technology graduates to get into a university, they do a fourth year, a BTEC. And we've surveyed those BTECs. Now, surely fourth year students in a uni polytechnic institution should get jobs because those institutions philosophically have promised them. That's their mission, right? So when you have 18%, even 25% in certain, in certain categories of unemployment, this is a serious problem. So just to start, I'm going to jump very fast because I, I also have uh, far too much tables. There's a debate um, between us in, in the academia. You've probably picked it up in the newspaper. There's doomsday um, exaggerations of, of how many graduates are unemployed. And there was Tommy, our colleague earlier speaking, who works in this area, I think you guys know that this is a very, uh, it's a burning, it's a hot potato, it's really a serious issue. But is it that extreme? Is it 20%? Is it 30%? We've got some Afrikaans academics at Stellenbosch who say, no guys, of the labor force survey, the stats SA produces, it's, it's 4%. We're not in a crisis. But many of you know, you're meeting people who are actually unemployed. So what we've done is we've done I've, in my career, done about three very large graduate destination surveys. We trace people after they leave university. It's normally done after two years, and we, we see whether they're employed. I mean, simply put, that's the main instrument. And it's, it's brutally frank. If you do it properly, and you get a big enough cohort that responds to your survey, you've got an accurate measure, which politicians and vice chancellors actually can't, can't hide away from. So there is a debate, and so those are the two studies. The one, we were commissioned by the consortium of all universities in the Western Cape, and these are the elite, three of them at least, consider, two of them consider themselves elite. Um, but all four, we surveyed all of their graduates in 2010. And then the second study was of all University of Technology, where we only surveyed their BTEC graduates, and they're in the heart of the manufacturing economy in terms of steel and, and so forth. <coughs> I'm going to jump international um, tables, but this is quite interesting. Maastricht University in, in the Netherlands, just to give you a sense of this global problem, and this was done in 2009, so it's post the 2008 economic crisis. There are three generations being surveyed here by this university. One that graduated in 2000, another that graduated in 2005, and, and a very young cohort that graduated in 2009. They did the research in 2012, two years afterwards. And you can see how high unemployment is for young people and young people in the wrong fields like social science. So it's 24%, all my main points are in the yellow. Um, for the middle generation, it's 10%. But what's very interesting there about the crisis of graduates is it, it eventually recedes, that most graduates eventually get a job. 
the question then becomes, are they underemployed? Are they, and some of the points you were making about life satisfaction, are they doing something really meaningful? Both of you, my previous speakers, were making those sorts of points. So 24% I consider very, very high. And, and that's happening in Italy and France and Greece and so forth. So we've done these two, um, these two studies. Um, they're not done by, by many other players. They're very difficult to do. You can imagine trying to find graduates of most of our universities in our townships who've moved because they've got a job. They've changed cell phone, they've got a new email. How do you actually trace people? So it's a nightmare. We won't go, in, and it's expensive then, therefore, to do it. But to give you some of the results. Um, so there, the yellow line. First point, institutional di di differentiation. That which institution you go to counts. And remember that our institutions are, are, are stamped by racial histories. So UCT and, and Stellenbosch, which were previously white elite institutions, have re really nice unemployment rates. 4.8% and 6.4% in 2012. Of, of graduates who had been on the market for two years. But CPUT and, and, and UWC have unemployment uh, rates of 13% and 16%. But if you go to CPUT, the, the, the Cape Peninsula University of Technology, and you look at women, you look at women from rural areas, you look at women from rural areas in badly chosen disciplines, the unemployment rate goes up into the 20s. So this is a very serious problem. So that's, that's a hard figure. It was done quite well, I think, for vice chancellors and politicians and so forth to, uh, to escape the implications of. Second point, <clears throat> yellow line. Most of the unemployed have done a certificate and a diploma. And for those of you who've spoken about business, many of you are from business, unfortunately many of these diplomas, it's almost contradictory, are in business studies. So at the University of Technology, you do a business studies diploma you've got a very high chance of being unemployed. But the odd thing is there's a very high level of, of uh, degrees, be, uh, people with degrees being unemployed as well, 37%, that's very, very high. And less so with, you know, the higher you go with the masters and doctorate, that's, a, that's an elite. They sort of generally employed quite quickly. So there's discrimination of sorts uh, around your institution you choose. There's, there's, a, there's segmentation or discrimination around the qualification you choose. Uh, now look at it in terms of race. But this is race in relation to who employs you, a general picture. So the first, the yellow line is what does the private sector, many of you guys, do in relation to employing these graduates? This is still the, the, the UCT study, by the way, the four universities in the Cape. And they're employed nationally. They're not employed. In fact, a huge chunk of them go to Gauteng for jobs. Look at the figure for white um, graduates. 61% of white graduates are welcomed into the private sector and get jobs within two years. Yeah. Whereas only 35% of African graduates from the Western Cape we're talking about yeah. get jobs in the private sector. When you look at the second line, which I haven't made yellow, um, you will see that there's a high percentage of African graduates in the public sector and a much lower level so it's 42% for African, and it's 24% uh, for white. So imagine if the government policies of the last 20 years had not prioritized employment of black people in government, you'd have a huge, huge crisis of unemployment of, of, of black people, but mainly African people. <clears throat> and that, this is just statistics numbers. We don't have explanations why that is. <clears throat> but one of my thoughts is that the, the economy is largely made up of small business. And small business is, lo is generally still in the hands of white families. And the way in which family businesses are run worldwide, it's not an act of racism or anything, is that the son or the daughter take it over or the uncles, you know, friends, nieces and whatever. Um, and the door is not open to any other graduate. Now, the people were talking earlier about social networks and learning how to fit into um, the workplace and so forth. So this, this, this dynamic is part of that of do you have networks? Do, do you have an uncle who runs a small business that could employ you? And I think that's partly the gates of the private sector are not entirely open to employing young people. There's an argument that, that the, some of the institutions do not train graduates properly enough and that's why they're unemployed. I can't tell you if that's true. This is just the, 
the statistics that we generated. Okay, so the Vol University um, tech of Technology has very similar results. Uh, you can see there, 45% of, blacks, of black graduates are in the, remember this is a fourth year graduate, are in the, pr in the private sector, but 71% of white graduates at the Vol University of Technology are in the private sector. So it's a very, very powerful thing coming out here. And if there wasn't affirmative action in the public sector, we'd, we'd, we'd look very bad as a country. Because there again, you can see that more, more African or more black graduates are employed in the uh, public sector. Okay, so to compare, there is some good news. One of the things is, um, is fi financing. Most of you would imagine that uh, the biggest source of funding now comes from the National Student Financial Aid Scheme. It doesn't. In, with, with universities of technology, with politics, this is one of their key missions, is lifelong learning. That you go after work and you study, you continuously upgrade and so forth. So the 28% of, of this cohort funded their own studies. I think that's an incredibly powerful um, statistic. And that's uh, at UCT. Uh, if you restrict it only to, sorry, that's at the, all of the universities. If you only look at the BTEC, the fourth year level, 49% of those people are funding their, uh, they funded that study. I mean, that is a fin not the National Student Financial Aid Scheme. So that's lifelong learning. That's an incredible plus. That's really good news. And I, I don't think it existed in terms of research that we had that insight. 49%. Uh, similar at VUT, 41%. So they're working adults who are paying their own way. There are probably some of you in this room who are doing master's degrees and, and so forth. Okay, let's jump that. Now what is the, what is the reality, what's the answer to the, 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 the first page, what I said I was going to focus on? I was going to focus on unemployment in universities of technology. So at Vol University it is 18.3%. And at CPUT, it's 8%. But these are fourth year students. They're not first years. They have got a Bachelor of Technology in a polytechnic institution. I think that flags some serious things going wrong, that the work integration concept is not really uh, working here. How did, this is almost the last um, subsection, is how do people get jobs? Uh, and you can see a number of uh, um, mechanisms, like answering. Um, an advert in the newspaper, sending your CV to somebody. But look at the, the significance of internships at the Vol University of Technology. That's in the middle of the old economy, manufacturing, mining. 31% of those graduates did internships with companies, and 31%, those 31% 31 carried on being employed by um, those companies. I think that's also quite a good, quite a positive um, indicator. It's very strange that it doesn't work at the, at the Cape Peninsula University of Technology. And I think one of the reasons, I can't prove this, is Cape Town is not a mining manufacturing capital. It's, it's the tourism and leisure industry, it's IT, it's um, a number of other, uh, of other sectors, the finance sector and so forth. So people get into jobs there in a different way. So my last point, the important thing that links with earlier discussions, is the last three lines that I've yellowed. Are people getting jobs through social networks, through having clout in their lives? That their uncle runs a small business, that their father knows somebody, that through their father they can actually get a job at their father's firm because his, his name is so well respected that they want to employ his family. And so are you getting a job because of your family? Are you getting a job because of your friend? Were you headhunted? That's quite a privilege, you know, especially at the beginning of your career, to actually be asked to apply to get a job. Now if you analyze that, it largely happens to middle class people, people with wealth. And al along with this thing is also knowing how to present yourself to, uh, to companies and, and knowing how to behave and arriving on time and being forewarned what the disciplinary code is. And middle class kids know this because they've seen it in their parents and it's been transferred to them, the soft skills someone was talking about earlier. Th this is really crucial. And it doesn't work as well for, pe uh, for, for kids who graduate and come from poor, from poor neighborhoods. So, so this table doesn't show you the social capital that people have at UCT and at uh, Stellenbosch, which is really very significant. It's the biggest category. I got my job 
not because <laughs> of, the, of the score I got to UCT or it's through my friends, through my family. It's a very powerful uh, finding. Lastly, I'm nearly there. So the good news <laughs> is something like lifelong learning that people in these institutions who are at work, Colin, I, I would imagine they, they are happy people who, who want to improve themselves and they're carrying on studying at their own expense. Uh, that's the good news. There's also another, another statistic um, that these very same people two years later are studying for a new degree. So not only did they, they get this qualification, but they're actually pursuing another one at their own expense, quite a high percentage. The bad news is graduate unemployment does exist. It's measured here at quite a high level. That would be considered a crisis level. You shouldn't have unemployment beyond 5%, then you're in trouble as a country. Certainly beyond 10%. Um, that's a very serious uh, figure. Second thing I would worry about is this, this labor market stratification. I'm, I'm not trying to make it a, 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 ra a ra the continuance of racial discrimination in the labor market, but it's something coming very close to that where black kids from poor universities are not getting jobs, white kids from the good universities are getting jobs. But women um, are actually also um, prejudiced against still. So at VUT, 26% of men got jobs, were unemployed. 26% of women, sorry, <coughs> were unemployed, and only 9% of men. How do you explain that? That's really weird. I mean, that is a very interesting um, discriminatory thing. And then lastly, what are the solutions? Now, it's depressing in talking about this thing. I don't think universities do anything at all. I hope there's nobody here from a university, but maybe it would be good. Um, there's a lot of work at the, in, the, intro, the, the entry to universities to, to, to prepare people bridging school to university. But there's no exit unit. You can't go to a university exit unit. The career offices are partly this. But the universities uh, fold their hands and say it's not our problem if graduates are unemployed. It's not our problem if graduates don't have this, the social capital, the social networks, the soft skills to charm their way into a job situation and win the interview and get a job. It's not their problem. So I think we need to, we need to collectively try and break that, uh, that, that, that obstacle. And I think there are projects that are starting to do that, NGOs working with unemployed graduates, and Tommy, I don't know if he's still here, who have successfully been able to, we need to put that bridge back in people's lives that seem to, seems to be missing, that they're unable to go from graduating to a situation where they're employed. That's, that's our study. Thanks very much for listening. <laughs>